<laughs> Salvatore M says, Shane, do you recall an episode of Hardcore TV where it was you literally doing an hour-long promo? Good, you're nodding already, so that's good. I remember yeah. that Simply the Best was playing in the background, and at the end we find out that this whole promo was for a match against Marty Jannetty. I swear this episode exists, I am not a victim of the Mandela effect. <laughs> so I know nothing uh, of this, so what happened? Totally Mandela effect, never happened. <laughs> no, it's, uh, we had gotten to the, we would go to the studio, which was our director Ron Buffon's parents' house, and he had, you know, the, the, the studio set up and all the equipment and everything. We would typically record in the basement. And you know, bless his parents, they'd be up there watching TV or making dinner or drinking coffee or whatever. And there we are playing wrestler in their house, right? And especially with this mouth. Uh, but we went, I, I got up there to the studio and uh, Paul said, what's the longest promo you can do? I don't know, two minutes, three to five, what do you need, five minutes? He goes, uh, um, uh, I don't know, maybe seven minutes. Why? I goes, can you do an hour? I went, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't do an hour. <laughs> it's, uh, and what happened was he had used all the good. We would do that every three weeks through the ECW arena, and we would get four, five, six hours. Those were epic shows. And uh, unfortunately, he had gotten everything off that show that he that he could use or wanted to use. And we were a week short. We were two weeks out of the arena. So we needed filler. And the only thing he could think to do was do a promo. I'm thinking, Paul, this is gonna, this is gonna be awful. I mean, you can't do and he said, I said, I don't think I can do an hour talking, you know, which would be at that time 46 minutes, I think, or 48 minutes. Uh I don't think I can do that, Paul. I mean, it's how do you keep a promo going that long and keep it interesting? And he said, if we break it up into three pieces. Well, have Joey off camera ask you three questions. Can you do that? So, well, let's give it a try. So we sat down, and what you don't see is Joey is literally a foot and a half to my left. And uh, if I remember correctly, I'm not looking in camera. I'm, like, looking off camera. And uh, he asked me the questions. And the first one, and it was pretty much as, you know, like we're doing here. Just answer the question as, as verbosely as you can possibly answer it. Uh I think we ended up going like at 90 minutes, uh, but that gave him stuff that he could cut and, and edit around. Uh, and people often ask about that. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he said, part of, when you said part of won't remember it. Uh, I remember it well because, you know, an hour promo ain't easy to do, hmm. uh, but doing it that way with Joey. And again, Joey, I, I, everybody knows my affinity for Joey and my respect for Joey. Uh, he made it easy. Uh, just, you know, him sitting there, asking the question. It was more like you and I are doing, just having a conversation on stuff. And we recorded it, and now I'm dreading it airing, you know, because of things like this. And if you're going to say, shut this guy up, God. And uh, I I don't consider that a promo. I, I consider it more like a, a pre-podcast, before podcasting, because it was pretty much what we do here. Ask a question, I would answer that as as, as deeply as I could answer it. And throw in the stories and stuff with it. I get a lot more accolade than that than I think I should. Uh, it was easy for me because of the, the the information's all there in my head. It's experience. Uh, the experiences that I had lived. And so Joey would pitch it to me, not necessarily asking about a particular uh, uh, experience. Like, hey, tell me the story about fill in the blank. Uh, he would say, okay, boom. And he'd pose it as a question. And he might just throw a little bit of like, 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 like Bruno. Like he'd say, okay, ask the question, da 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 da. You know, like Bruno San Martino did, or so, just like that little quip, like, well, okay, that put my brain in a vein. And it really was easy for me, I, not at all hard because it was pretty much what we do on a week, you know, once a month uh, 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 taping. It, it, again, Joey, I give credit to, and I give credit Paul, uh, credit to Paul in the way that he edited. It, it, it comes off like I'm just you know, seamlessly doing this thing. And that was more the magic of television than what was the reality. So uh, easy for me. And uh, I think much more credit should go to Joey Styles for that because he just him sitting there. Like, again, we have such a friendship and a, and a respect for each other that him sitting there made it a lot more comfortable for me. Um, if I'd have been sitting there by myself and Paul read the question and I had to answer it back to the camera it would have been, I think, a lot more difficult. Uh, just reading this, so eventually it's revealed that you're sort of directing it all to Marty Ginetti of all people. Why Marty? 
uh, that was, they had Marty coming in. Uh, Paul, what Paul would do is he would have like people like Marty, uh, Tolly, uh, Cody Michaels, people that had some experience in the business or name value in the business and bring them in. And this was sort of like the tryout. Uh, if they can get through this and have this kind of match and elevate the main event, then we can use them someplace else. And unfortunately, I, I don't know if it was a commentary on my performances. Uh, you know, Cody Michaels and I went to college together. So we've been friends for the better part of 40 plus years. And I, I tell people all the time, if you want to go back and look at what kind of stroke the franchise did not have in ECW, uh, name a person that I got a job for in ECW. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of any. Uh, Sabu weekly was bringing people in to get hired for a little bit. And sometimes some stuck around, some didn't. Uh, Taz would bring people in from his school. Uh, you know, there were, Tommy would bring somebody in. Uh, I can't think of a single person that I got a job in, in, uh, in ECW. And, uh, I think it speaks more like the, the fact that I think Paul and I had such a great working relationship is truly because we were opposites, complete opposites. Uh, his politics are different than mine. His worldview is different from mine. He grew up in a well-to-do family. I grew up in a lower class, middle, lower class family. Uh, so our, our life's experiences are almost completely opposite from each other. But he saw something in me, and I had a value placed in him and trusting him uh, that we could put all that stuff aside and create this character that was the franchise. Uh, but truth be known, there were times that as the character went on, when I would go to Paul, uh, for for example, after the Arn came and pitched the idea of Flair coming, um, and then he settled with WCW and resigned. It was evident to everybody in the building that Flair was not coming to ECW. And I said, it looks silly, me talking about him now. Give me something else. I need to go a different direction. He said, no, no, I want you to keep doing that. Um, I think Lars Park, because he didn't like Rick either. Mm -hmm. And he probably got his jollies off the fact that I was, you know, hammering him so hard. But, uh, you know, I, I would beg him for things. You know, please. There were times during that run where that character started growing stale to me. I was like, I felt like I was just repeating the same stuff, and that didn't hold any lure to me. And so, like, I would go to him, and he'd say, "Well, let me think about it," and then he'd never get back to me. And I'd push it, and I'm, okay, but well, let me. I'm still, you know, I don't know. Do whatever you want. That that was like sort of the way the conversations would go. And you know, as much as I didn't like that, I think in the long run that did offer fresh approach to the to the character because out of anger you know just being pissed that like I'm, I'm asking my boss for help with this and he's not giving it to me it's like okay i'll show you I'll, I'll add these parameters to this character and so it made it much more intimate to me and uh uh intimate in the sense that because i was creating it in my head i understood it I understood what this character would do with this. Like you hear me in an interview saying, I know the franchise would vote. I know what kind of women he would pursue. I know how he'd, uh, what kind of liquor he would order at the, uh, at the bar. Um, very different than Roy Martin's, uh, because I fleshed this guy out. I've played in this guy's head long enough to know how he thinks. And I say that vicariously because it is a different person. It's not when I go back and watch my, my sons asked me one time, they said, dad, do that voice you do when you're wrestling. I said, what, what, what do you mean? He said, you know, the, the, when you're the franchise the, <clears throat> and I sat there in my living room and I could not for the life of me find that voice. It sounded like me imitating somebody being the franchise, mm -hmm. not being the franchise. And I realized after that, I had to, I had to be in the gear. I had to be in the building. I had to be in the mindset of playing that character so that I could find that proper voice to that character. And I know to the fans, that sounds ridiculous. Uh, but you know, if, if you know, I'm, I, I was going to embarrass myself. I'm going to try to the cut the fucking music. It's it, there's a, there's a, a closeness to it, but there's not the verve. Uh, you know, Moose will say like certain words that I'll say as the franchise will go, man, nobody says that word like the franchise. Uh, because there's so much guttural mm -hmm. into it. This is that character. It's puking out his dislike for the politics of the business and, and espousing his point. Um, so, you know, when you hear of character development, there's a lot more that goes into it. If you're going to create a character to say, okay, well, let's put a cowboy hat on him and he'll ride a horse to the ring and, and we'll put spurs on his boots. Okay. That'd be pretty cool. 
okay, then what? Like that's the visual. Then what? What is the character? Um, you know, and I think a lot of times our business has the, especially lately, uh, let's drop down to, okay, we're going to make it in the style. He, he, he. It's why, like I was, and again, for me, it's my personal taste. Never a big fan of Memphis wrestling, this part of it. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to break you in half. It's like, it's like sort of the Diana Ross and Supremes. Yeah. Stop in the name of love. It, it, it's like, we're going to pantomime this and it lo looks corny to me. Uh, to me, again, the, that guy that'll sneak up on you, reach down your, steal your tonsils out of your throat uh, and trip your mother and take her purse while he's doing it and then tell you why he did it. And you go, yeah, I still hate the guy, but I think I get it. Um, to me, that's a, a much, more, much more nefarious heel and a much more dangerous human being. Somebody that can convince you that why they're doing what they're doing, as much as you disagree with it, can make sense in your head. I'm really disappointed you said that you don't like wrestlers pointing to their brain because in the notes for the clash of the champions that we're going to be doing next week, I've specifically written on like uh, 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 Joe Laura Knight's brother, Mark, and he points to his brain or the other guy points to his brain. I was like so happy. He points to his brain, I'm very happy. <laughs> There's not yeah. enough brain pointing in my... It, 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 maybe it's hanging out with Dutch too much, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, with the word that you say is the franchise, that is a very franchise word, I've never heard of anyone say with so much passion in their voice the word because. Uh, especially with the um, <laughs> NWA throwing down the title thing, because I can't even in say, because! And then it's like, whoa, yeah. you really <laughs> meant that word. Yeah, it all comes from the gut. It's, you know, and, you know, I had taken some acting courses right out of college. Not for wrestling. It was just something I was interested in. <clears throat> and, you know, they, uh, plus when I uh, was first doing, uh, like becoming a star in wrestling, like moving up the card, one of my professors at Bethany, a guy by the name of uh, Dr. David Judy, <clears throat> he has since passed. Uh, he ran the theater department. And I went down there for a weekend because, <clears throat> again, everybody thinks, well, how hard's acting? He's get on camera and you do this and you do that, right? And he says to me, like, he's sitting in the audience. It's me and him in the theater. I'm on the stage by my head. Walk across the room. Walk across the stage. So it's no, 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 no. Walk across the stage. No, 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 no. I just walk across the stage. I'm going, what the hell? <laughs> I'm walking across the stage, right? He said, you look like Frankenstein's monster walking. And he, you know, got up and he showed me, like, how to, you know, like, fluidly walk across the stage what looks like a natural gate. And, uh, you know, it, it, from that point forward, I was always like looking deeper into the things. When I'd watch my playback, I was like, oh, that's why. Because uh, the guys like him, these classes that I took, completely unrelated to wrestling, had nothing to do with wrestling. It had more to do with an interest in acting. And, uh, uh, you know, he just, like I, I say, Steamboat opened the horizon. He made wrestling from black and white to color to me. David, Judy, and those classes that I would take after college showed me that. <clears throat> Whether you're on screen as a wrestler or, you know, just a character in a movie or a television show, there's a way to do this that uh, I, I was just watching a thing last night on, on Scripps Television with uh, uh, Jesse from, from uh, I forget the actor's name, uh, from uh, Breaking Bad. Um, Aaron, Aaron Paul. Aaron, uh, Aaron Paul, yes. A great actor and watching him and listening to him. I'm thinking about like what he's saying. It's like me listening to Steamboat and watching in the night sky what he's saying. I, I, I'm hip to everything he's saying in a completely different genre. Uh, and, and I think a lot of that helped me eventually when I, when this character of the franchise would come up because I did have these experiences and I did have these professors telling me these things and these teachers and these other classes that I would take, you know, showing you that there's a different approach to this. And and a different way to do it, and and to finding the character in that skin, you know. And like I said, there's a to me Shane Douglas in the franchise, Troy Martin in the franchise are two very different people, and by design. And uh, I I hope the people that know, excuse me, the real Troy Martin would go, yeah, he's right. There's nothing like the same. And there's probably a few who say, yeah, he's just like him. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's uh it's been fun to play that character, and I think that there's a something in that. And in, to get back to the original question, and, and Tori's portrayal and Francine's portrayal, that they're playing something that's very opposite of them. If, if for the, the guys out there that know either of them, 
Uh, no, like the, the characters they played with me on camera was very, very, very different than who the real people are behind that. Thank again, thank God. Uh, but you know, it's it, it's fun. Like when you get to do the stuff that we do and get on camera and and play that kind of a character, uh, it's liberating in ways and it's exhausting in other ways. But it's fun. All of it's fun. 